Hi friend and welcome back to my channel. I have a very hungry golden retriever. Rightfully so, it is time for him to eat. I'll get him some food here in a second, but it is Tuesday and I've got quite a bit to get done today. It's also raining, so I'm gonna have to get a little creative on keeping the toddler entertained because this is a toddler who only wants to be outside at all times. So I will try to figure out what that looks like. I, I also really wanted to talk very quickly about some things that I feel like going on this trip to Michigan kind of opened my eyes to, both with chasing a dream, just existing in reality, parenting, all of these things. It's interesting how like travel can do that for you, but let me very quickly feed this dog before he loses his freaking mind and we'll go from there. I really need a runner dishwasher, but I am going to get his breakfast on a plate. And I also am going, it is 8.15 in the morning and I'm gonna make some couscous because I want to make, I used to make this a lot when I worked in an office. It's technically, Online, I found it as like the Jennifer Aniston salad. It's not the Jennifer Aniston salad, but it it got coined that way. That's how I discovered it, but it's so good. But I wanna make the couscous now so it has a chance to cool off in the fridge before I make the salad at lunchtime. And I make like a big batch of it and then I'm able to eat it throughout the week. And so I'll make sure that I share that with you when that time comes. But yes, I need to like get the water boiling. I do usually use chicken broth when I'm making couscous, but I don't have any. So I'm just gonna use water. We're just gonna use water. I also am having a really hard time finding couscous in a store right now. Both Food Lion, Aldi, no. Both Target and Aldi didn't have it in stock. Luckily I had this in the pantry, but I'm not really sure about what's going on with the couscous. Like why are we unable to find just plain couscous in a store? I don't know, but it's what's happening. Okay, I need a third a cup of couscous. Ah, I'm making a mess. How did I not have like an easy pour situation? I need half a cup of water. So to make couscous, in case you didn't know, you boil the water, you add in the couscous and let it like sit. We are out in front of our house, Wade is playing in what he calls baby sand because we have this like little sandbox that we made out of like a kiddie pool out in front of our house because there's like a covering. And he calls this baby sand because the lake he calls big sand. So we are out here so that he can play outside even though it's raining. But I felt like now would be probably a good time to chat about some of the things that I noticed when I was traveling this weekend, which... <sighs> I feel like I've noticed some of these things in the past. I just never really had the wherewithal to kind of apply them to my everyday life. So I don't know how things go for other people when they're traveling, but especially when I'm traveling alone, which I feel like I've done quite a bit, it's really refreshing and reassuring to encounter other people. Uh -uh, sand stays in the sandbox, Wade encounter other people who are just really kind and patient and engaging and warm and I'm not talking like the annoying you sit next to a person on a plane and they just won't shut up and all you want to do is close your eyes that's hold on there's just such a like a community-based feeling when you're traveling and you're experiencing something together I encountered such lovely people from like security checkpoints to just checking in in general there was a woman when I first got there there was a man and his son standing behind her in line and I've traveled quite a bit but I haven't traveled in recent years and so things were very different the terminal was different at RDU than it had been the last time I went the process is different and so the this the dad and the son were I think like traveling for the first time ever and they were certainly hesitant and had a lot of questions and this woman was just so kind and was offering all kinds of information to them and really reassuring to them and like trying to like okay well when you get here if you have a layover this is what you're gonna do just out of the like goodness and kindness of her heart and after a few minutes 
I was realizing that I was listening to because she was talking about like this new check-in process that was kind of confusing to me because I had checked in online so I didn't know why I was waiting in this line and it was just like all of a sudden I looked around and pretty much everybody that was standing in line with us there were two different lines and there's probably 20 people around us that were like turned and facing this woman who was just helping this man and his son because we were getting something out of what she was sharing with them and it was just really kind of like connective and it reminded me a lot of that feeling that we all had when we were going through the beginning of the pandemic together where everyone was just willing to help and be engaging and supportive and understanding and I feel like we lack so much of that in our day-to-day -day these days and I actually noticed it when I once I landed and I was back in my car and I was traveling back from the airport to my house I was like experiencing those really frustrating like road ragey feelings where like a car got like pulled out in front of me and then started to go really slow and just the immediate thoughts that I had were negative and like frustrated and annoyed and I just wanted to get around that person as quickly as I could whereas if I was in the airport and that happened I would immediately assume that they didn't know what they were doing and that they might need help and to see like to observe a little bit and see if there was a way for me to be able to help them get where they were trying to go it's like you have a different approach when you're not in your day-to-day -day. and I'd really like to try to implement that like understanding and curiosity in my day-to-day -day life. I don't know if it's possible, but I would like to. Another thing that I noticed, and this is in regards to parenting, is there were quite a few like little kids, toddlers and infants traveling with parents, whether they were traveling with their parents alone or traveling with both of their parents, whatever. And I noticed, and again, I wanna make this very, very clear. I am not judging this parent because I am this parent. I am this parent observing this from the outside looking in was really eye-opening for me to remember when I'm in that situation. So toddlers especially, infants especially, when they start to squirm or tantrum or have a hard time or whatever it is, parents immediately go into like shutdown mode where they're just trying to like get the kid to be quiet. And that's from a, I don't even know if that's necessarily from a selfish standpoint, although I have certainly been there where I'm just at my wit's end and I just, I have no patience left and I just want the noise to stop. But a lot of times, at least I know for me, it's coming from a place of like being hyper aware of the people around me and wanting to keep them comfortable and refrain from judging me in that situation or judging my kid in that situation. And having been the outsider, and now I don't know that this is true for everybody, but having been the outsider looking in, the last thing I was thinking in any of those moments was, oh my God, would that kid just shut up already? I was thinking, oh, that child is having a hard time. Poor mom, poor child. Like, I wish there was something I could do to help, but like, I was completely understanding of the fact that like, a toddler's gonna have a hard time. Like, it's okay. And I felt like really, I felt for the parent feeling this outside external pressure to like get the situation under control, which was probably only exasperating the situation rather than calming it down. And it made me realize that in those situations, I'm far more concerned with making sure everyone else around us is comfortable rather than addressing the needs of my child and making sure they're comfortable. And it was just really a sobering realization. I don't know if that's always true, but it was certainly true and eye-opening for me in that particular moment. And it happened a couple of times. And so I just wanna offer comfort to parents. If they're ever in a situation when you're in like a grocery store or you're out in public in any way, shape or form, and your toddler starts to melt down or your infant is having a hard time or whatever the situation is, I think it's just really comforting, whether it's true or not. Because here's the thing is we don't know what anybody else is thinking at any moment. And so we don't know if it's true if they're judging us and we don't know if it's true if they're supporting us. So if we have to assume one way or the other, why don't we assume the way that makes us feel like supported and comforted and just at better internal peace and to assume that the people around us are just thinking, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry they're having a hard time. I wish there was a way we could help. Oh man, I was there, you know, at some point. This is hard, we know. And to allow the parent the space to just 
address the needs of their child without having to like add the external pressure of making sure everyone else around you is comfortable. I understand in certain situations where you're, you know, eating at a restaurant or whatever, where they're just the most appropriate thing to do is like remove yourself from the situation. I get it. But there are also many situations in which removing yourself is simply not an option. And I think we just make things harder on ourselves by adding that external pressure, like assuming that everyone around us just wants us to get our kid to be quiet. It was a really sobering realization and I just wanted to share that with you. Another story that I would like to share from this trip, and then I promise I'll stop talking, is like I mentioned in my last vlog, travel was very simple. It, everything was on time, everything lined up perfectly. It was a very easy travel experience. And the one thing that I didn't have like, previously lined up was my uber from the airport to the hotel but i wasn't super concerned about it because i knew i could call an uber once i got there you can't reserve an uber from the airport to the hotel understandably so i called my uber and obviously there's always these underlying nerves that come along with that especially as a female traveling traveling alone in a strange city is i watch a lot of true crime i listen to a lot of true crime podcasts you're just hyper aware and there is just like this hyper vigilance as there should be but it's also sad that there has to be but regardless at the end of the day you're you're summoning a stranger from the internet to get in their car which goes against everything we were ever taught as 90s kids on the internet it's like don't talk to strangers and don't get in the car with strangers and now we're literally summoning strangers from the internet to get in their vehicles and take us places whoa, whoa can you keep that sand in the sandbox please thank you so much and so i called my uber and I like sent my husband the details. I was relieved to see that it was a woman, which is not fair, but it it was relieving to see that it was a woman that had picked up my ride. And I sent the details of the ride to my husband who made a joke and was like, okay, thank you so much for this. Please make sure you do this every time you call an Uber, just in case you end up on one of your podcasts, Whoa. which was funny in the moment. Uh, little did I know that he was essentially predicting what was about to happen, but not in the way that you think. So I get in the Uber. This woman is absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. Bless you. And we are just right off the bat chit-chatting. She was putting my sign in the car and asked if it was a keyboard. And I was like, no, it's actually a um, vendor sign for an event that I'm doing. And so that, of course, prompted the line of questioning of, like, what kind of event it is it? Blah, 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 blah. Well, within like 30 seconds, we determined that we had so much in common and just like our, I'm gonna wait until he's done. Okay, sorry, wait for her to melt down outside. But so we discovered really quickly that we had a lot in common and just from the conversation about the event, my story came up and she finally was just like, I'm so sorry, this is probably really inappropriate for me to ask you, but would you be willing to be on a podcast? And I was like, absolutely, I would be willing to be on a podcast. And she's like, do you have a business card or anything? I'm like, well, no, I don't have a business card, but I do have my bookmarks with me that had like my QR code so people could like follow me on social media or purchase a book at a later time if they didn't want to purchase it at the event or whatever. And I, she emailed me. She did actually email me when I got back. I had an email from her. And so I'm going to be on her podcast sometime in the next couple of weeks, which is wild and crazy. And it was just really kind of a, I mentioned in my video before that there were like some signs and synchronicities that just made me really believe that like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And it that, like, starting the trip off just like that, like, getting into Michigan, the first person I meet in Michigan is this type of person. It was just really, I don't know, just offered a lot of comfort and clarity and confirmation, which is awesome because I mentioned that I was having a lot of trouble trying to figure out, like, where I was supposed to be setting my focus and what I was supposed to be doing and all of that. Chaos is happening around me. I need to sort these crazy kids out. Things have been so like crazy and chaotic lately that I've gotten so out of routine with my cleaning and like, just all of the things that I do to keep our lives functioning slightly around here and also keep my mental health from declining because I'm one of those people that's like tidy house, tidy mind. The house has been tidy-ish, but it is not clean. My house is not clean. You don't have a housekeeper. I am the housekeeper, as I'm sure you are as well, because I am a very normal mom living a very normal life in a very normal house. 
with a very normal budget. So I think, despite the fact that I have a million things that I need to be doing as far as work is concerned right now, I'm actually just waiting to hear back on a couple of things. And so I have kind of like a moment of pause, I suppose, in work. It's raining, so we can't be outside. It's tricky to try to like get anything done in the house with everybody in the house. So I'm going to attempt to clean my house with my son awake and home and everybody inside, but we'll see how this is gonna go. This might be a really bad idea, but let's. Also excuse the outfit because I just threw the sweatshirt on because it's colder outside than I expected, but I don't match. I don't match. for dinner. These are pretty much a weekly staple in our house because they're cheap, they're easy, they're delicious. Everybody eats them and it makes a lot of food and they make great leftovers. I'll leave the recipe in the description below. You guys have seen me make this before. salad is cucumbers, garbanzo beans, which is actually not what it calls for. I just put them in. Couscous, again, not what it calls for. It calls for burger. I don't have that. I use couscous. Mint and parsley. And then I just, this is like what I pre-make. This is about enough for two or three days worth of the salad. And then I put it in a bowl. And when I would take this to the office, I would just store it just like in this bowl like this. And then when it was time for me to eat it, I would add the next two things, which is gonna sound weird. I know it's gonna sound weird, but pistachios, probably more than you think you need. It's also like deceptively filling. So I always end up making more than I actually need. But then the last thing I add is feta cheese. And that's the salad. It's not healthy as far as like calories are concerned, but it is healthy in the sense that it provides a lot of the nutrients that you need in a day. And if you are somebody that struggles to hydrate that many cucumbers, you actually retain more hydration from consuming vegetables and fruit than you do when you drink water, because when you drink water, it just goes right through you. So that's a piece of information that I learned when I was battling kidney infections over and over and over again. Um, again, it's very high calorie, so if you're like somebody that's trying to count calories, you might wanna like run the metrics on it. But if you're looking for a delicious meal that fills you right up, that'll power your brain, hydrate you, keep you full for a long time, that's the other thing, is it keeps you full for a while, this will do it for you. There she is. I'm gonna go eat and work for a few minutes while the kid's sleeping. And I'll be back. I would like to clean the guest bathroom, our bathroom, and change our bedding. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get all that done before the kid wakes up from his nap and also get a work project done, but we're gonna try. And then this afternoon, I need to go into town. Okay, 
I know I've mentioned on TikTok, but I don't think I've ever mentioned here the value of getting a fabric shower curtain liner. I resisted for many years because I'm like, I'm not spending $20 on a shower curtain liner. I'm just gonna buy the little plastic one at Dollar General. No, I bought that shower curtain liner almost five years ago. No, almost four years ago. And it is so great because when it starts to get a little dingy, you know what I'm talking about, when it gets a little gross, you bleach it. You put it in the wash, in a normal wash load. I use hot water. It's a small load, it's super quick. You don't have to dry it. And you put laundry detergent and bleach. And it comes out looking freaking brand new. This is not information you asked for, but it's information I'm giving you because I didn't have it for far too long. And honestly, I kind of feel like my mom was like telling me for a long time and I resisted. So now you know, a fabric shower curtain liner. It's the way to go. I'll see if I can't find the one. Not that you have any desire to buy the one I have. It's a shower curtain liner. It's not like exciting information. But if I can find it, I will share it with you. Also, yes, I, again, I'm a very normal person in a very normal house. And this is a very normal bathroom that has not been updated yet and probably won't be for a while because we decided to have a kid <laughs> instead of finishing our renovation. Is that terrible? I mean, it's just a little bit ugly. That's all. It's perf perfectly functional. I, however, am very curious to know. I hate, I hate to complain, but I despise having my laundry be in the guest bathroom. Can't stand it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I will never have a laundry. Like I wish there was a way to like put the access to the laundry on this wall here and there's no possible way to do that. But Yeah, uh, the bathrooms were not getting cleaned today. <laughs> the bathrooms were not getting cleaned. And uh, so just as Jonathan was going home from work, we took a tumble. Actually, that's not true. We did not take a tumble. We jumped off the couch, which he's done before. We've told him not to do it. He's two and a half. He's gonna do it. But his foot got caught as he was jumping and so he didn't have control over his landing and really hurt himself. And it really scared me. So now I've lost my will to live. My husband got this over the weekend while I was gone. I've never had it before. So good. Very, very good. That being said, I'm gonna end the vlog here because I just, I really can't. I'm gonna go get in my bed. That's not true. I'm gonna go take a shower. I'm gonna go get in my bed. And I'm going to finally give myself like an hour to read a book I have been so excited to read. I'm like 30 pages into it and haven't had enough time to like sit, focus and read it. It's called Heart to Heart. It's by Sarah Furlong Burr, who was one of my table neighbors at the author event this weekend. And by the end of the event, I was like, I've heard the pitch for this book enough times now that like I desperately need to read it. It's like um, heart to heart is essentially like kind of like The Bachelor. And I'm real into the idea of a book about that. That also is what got me to read um, like The Selection, I think is what it was called. Kiara was the author's name. And you know what, I have a phone right here. I could look it up. Yeah, Kiara Cass, The Selection series. And that book series was sold to me in a way that was like, if The Bachelor met The Hunger Games, and I was like, sold. And it was exactly that. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me today. Sorry today was a little bit all over the place, but it's kind of what to be expected, given the fact that like life the last like seven days has been absolutely insanity. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. And I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.